So I just had another great lunch out here in the woods and it's time to follow it up with an even better cup of coffee. And in order to make that, I brought out a new coffee maker to share with you. This is the Wakeko Mini Presso GR2 Hand Powered espresso maker. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. I'd like to thank Wakeko for sending out the Mini Presso GR2 hand-powered espresso maker. So this is the latest in the Mini Presso lineup from Wakeko and they sent it out to me about two months ago. I've been using it at home and out here in the woods and I've gotten used to making a great cup of coffee with it and I figured it's time to share that with you. So what I'm going to do is just focus in on the unit itself, show you everything that it came with, the basic set up for it but of course we have to make a cup of coffee with it all right so the uh, mini presser does come with this nice little stuff sack for it good quality you can see the wakeko name mini presso gr2 on the outside of it drop the stuff sack aside so everything you need other than coffee itself is all included inside of this unit so let's start at the top where the reservoir is inside of the lid i'm gonna have to find places for all of this stuff we have a few things. Let me just put the main unit aside. So there is a little brush. I didn't think I was gonna use this, but it actually comes in more handy than I thought it would originally. So it's nice to have the brush. There is, this is a base. Now, primarily you would use this at home, but it actually did come in handy in here in the woods as well. And what that's for is for setting the unit on, well, okay, minus the cup on the bottom. I guess we'll have to show you that in a moment. So when you're finished using and made your coffee, you need to set it down somewhere because it's probably going to drip a little bit of coffee. And, uh, you know, having this to lay it on your on the counter is a great idea. But out here in the woods, I found laying it down, then putting this on means I don't get the end of the unit dirty as well. So that's also stored in the top of it. I showed you the brush. Now, two units here. First off, there is a dosing funnel and this goes in. Well, I'll show you how it operates in a minute, but this is what you would pour your coffee in through to get it into the portafilter, the basket that holds the coffee. And then when you've done that, when and in order to do that, of course, you probably need a coffee scoop. I have a coffee scoop right in my container, but this doubles up as a coffee scoop, but also as a tamper. So that allows you to flat note and press down the coffee inside of the portafilter. Let's bring the unit back into the pitcher. So the portafilter I mentioned at the bottom is right here. First off, the shower screen. The shower screen is removable. Anywhere you see the orange silicone, that's a, that's a gasket or a seal, means well, I can't get it out with my fingernails, but for cleaning purposes, you can get the shower screen out so that, you know, clean any oils off so it just doesn't affect under your next cup of coffee if you want to do it. I don't do it every time because it doesn't get that dirty, honestly. So the portafilter is kind of unique, and this is one of the things that earned this unit the IF 2024 Design Awards adjustable basket. So they have made this basket so that you can put between 8 and 12 grams of ground coffee in it. Now I say between 8 and ground because of course it depends on the coffee. Some is lighter by weight or by volume than others is. But basically if you have the screen on the bottom in at where it is right now, that would hold about 8 grams of coffee. Give you a very very small shot or pull of espresso. But if you want to make a larger one, easy enough, pop it out and there's a spacer on it that you take off, put it back in, and now the basket is that much deeper and you can get up to 12 grams of coffee in it. And that's the way we're going to use it today is for a larger cup of coffee. You can still see there's some, had some coffee this morning with it. Now, here's the other cool thing about this. And I came across this by accident because of course I had to try it out without reading the instructions just to see how easy and intuitive it is. Um, emptying this out. So one of the things I've found, especially with small espresso makers, is sometimes it can be a challenge to get all the coffee out of the basket. I mean, you can tap, you know, pound it like this, you can get a spoon, because it's usually compacted in there fairly tight. And, you know, then you, you, you know, it takes a little bit of work. I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's nothing that would stop me from using those espresso makers, but this one just goes that extra step further. When you're ready to repo or to uh, collect up your grounds to take home, all you need to do is once again push on the bottom and the whole thing comes out and you get a puck of coffee that you can just 
brush right off into your compost or your garbage bag or whatever it is you're taking it home in. So it just makes the job that much easier. All right, so those are the basic features of this unit. Let's go over a few specifications for it. First, let me just put it back together and then I'll do that. All right, there is one last component of this I really didn't show and that is the cup. So it actually does two things. It gives you something to drink from because of course espresso is just a small shot of coffee, but it also provides protection to the end of the porta filter so that it doesn't get dirty. So that's all inclusive. Now, I want to give you some specifications for this. It will all be in the video description as well, of course, but overall dimensions, 5.92 inches by 2.37 inches in diameter, which is 125 by 60 millimeters weight. 10 ounces. That's it. 10 ounces. 285 grams. Now, the water capacity is not great. It's only 2.7 ounces or 80 milliliters. Actually, 80 milliliters is more than you think it is when you're making espresso. That's the maximum you're likely want to put in. And to do that, you can bring it up to, well, the line is not clear inside, but you bring it up to where it looks like it's just below the surface of the top. And that's how much water you're going to pour inside there. So up to 80 milliliters. And I mentioned you can make either coffee with a, an 8 gram dose or a 12 gram dose. Up to you. All right. That's the basic dimensions and the basic components of it. Let's put it in operation. All right, so I have everything in front of me that I need to make my coffee with except for my hot water, which is just off the boil and is sitting beside me. So I'll start by, this is that dosing funnel. It fits in nicely in top of the porta filter like that. And now I'm gonna pour the coffee in. So you would, if you didn't have a coffee scoop other than the one that you know came with it. Um, you could use the one that's also doubles as a tamper. I'll, I won't be using it as a scoop so much, but I will be using it as a tamper. So now, the coffee that I'm using today, I don't think there's any surprise to anybody, is Rampage. This is the Rampage Riot. It is a medium blend, not especially dark. Uh, I know most people traditionally think of espresso as being made with like a French roast or an Italian roast, something very dark and very strong. You don't have to. You can make it with virtually any coffee you want. In fact, I'd recommend you try different coffees just to see what the profile is like. You, you'll be surprised at how much of a difference it can actually make. So I have about 12 grams of coffee in the basket right now, and uh, it is ground quite fine. Actually, I'm a little short, a little bit more. It's hard to judge with the filter or the funnel still on. Let's see what that looks like. Still a little short, a little bit more. That should do it. Yeah, so I have the, I ground this this morning before coming out at home and I have it ground quite fine. Most of the time people will say grind your coffee very fine for espresso. Again, experiential. You grind it the way you feel best. You try it a number of different ways, you get different flavor profiles or extractions as they say. So now this, the scoop doubles as the tamper and I'm not pressing down very hard. I'm just trying to level everything off. And no, normally if I had, sometimes I get grounds all stuck to the outside. That's where the little brush comes in if you don't want grounds in your threads because you do need to get a snug fit to the bottom of the unit itself so you don't have leakage because there's going to be a fair amount of pressure created here. In fact, that's something I didn't mention. You get up to 18 bars of pressure created by using this by hand. So that's quite a bit of pressure. There's the little stand I mentioned on my impromptu table. So my water is hot. I actually like to push this out ahead of time so that uh, lessens the chance of me burning myself. So I've watered just below the top of the unit. This will screw on if I can get it on level to start with. There we go. And you do want that on because again, the water is very high. A little cup. Now all I have to do is start pumping. It takes about eight pumps before the pressure builds up and releases the water in through that dispersion screen on top of the coffee, down through the coffee, and into the little cup here. So let's get started. And once you do, you just keep pumping until no more comes out. And there we go. There's the first bit of the shot. Hi, lots of crema with this. That's beautiful. 18 bars of pressure is a lot of pressure. You don't need that much to create a good espresso. In fact, most people will say nine bars of pressure is all you need. When I say up to 18, I don't know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a variable thing. There we go. You can see I'm just 
finishing off. There, set that down. And there is a lovely, good size shot of espresso. All right, let's do a taste test. All right, let's see if I can give you a close up. Look at the crema on top of that. Beautiful. Rich smelling. Wow. So if you've had espresso before, you're not an espresso aficionado, so to say, you know, you don't drink a lot of espresso and the only espresso you've had has been especially strong and bitter, likely because it was made with a very dark roast, almost burnt coffee, such as uh, French roast or Italian roast. They're very dark, very oily. They have their own flavor profile. I like them, not everybody does. But if you make espresso with a lighter roast coffee like this Rampage Riot, changes everything. You still get an intensity you can't get from your coffee any other way. You still get more flavor, more body or mouthfeel is the best way to describe it. Uh, that's, that crema is not cream, of course. It's just the way that the air goes through the coffee uh, under pressure. You get that much of a deeper extraction. So here's the only downside to making espressos like that. It's not very big, is it? 80 mils of, coffee, of water, you know, not even three ounces. It's not very big. But if you make a good strong shot like this into a larger cup and pour a little hot water on top of it, and then it's known as an Americano. And then you've got something that more closely resembles a regular cup of coffee, but still retains the depth and the character of an espresso. I can drink it either way. I drink mine black. I don't put any milk in it. I don't make cappuccinos or flat whites or any of those other fancy coffees that require espresso as the base for them. But uh, if you do, then this, well, okay, all you need to do is figure out some way to froth up your milk out here in the woods, which can be done, of course. But for me, I just enjoy it like it is right, like, like it is right now. Great little shot of coffee for sure. Okay, I'm going to finish this off and enjoy it, but before it gets cold, I'll just finish off the review with a few closing thoughts for the Wakeko Mini Presso GR2. Do you know, I've had a few other uh, espresso makers, I've had a few other products from Wakeko, and I have reviews of them on my channel if you're interested. The Picamoca, the NS2, which takes the Nespresso capsule. Um, these are high quality functional units. They're not toys and they compete so well. Now I know true espresso aficionados that spend thousands of dollars on their grinders and their, and their machines and their coffee and everything else will argue this, but for someone like myself who just enjoys it but doesn't necessarily get into the finest nuances that some people do, this makes an incredible um, a little coffee. You can either for home, out here in the woods or travel. If you're a traveler and you want to pop something into your carry-on bag for the airplane that still makes great coffee, this will do the trick. And it's hand-powered. No batteries, no nothing required, nothing to worry about. You just need a source of hot water and good coffee, of course. And then you get this. Okay. The specifications for this unit will be in the video description as well as the links to where you can take another look at it. But I'm open to many comments or questions you may have about the Wakeko Mini Presso GR2 Hand Power Espresso Maker. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.